Welcome to another episode of Resilience Rising with Naturally Cinnamon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time of whatever day it is. While you're watching or listening to this episode, be sure to like it, love it, share it, rate it, comment, depending on what platform you're on. But most important of all, I need you to subscribe and follow. I'm Naturally Cinnamon. And I am a therapist, life coach, resilience cultivator, and I'm the founder and CEO of Jamila Wellness LLC, where women go to be well and live beautifully. You can find me online at jamilawellness.org and also at naturallycinnamon.com. Now, today's topic was a question that came up on social media, and I had a conversation, social media conversation back and forth and got some input from a few people And basically, it's about emoji use in relationships and how people feel about that. Now, if I sound so much clearer, it's because I have a brand new microphone and I'm kind of excited about that. And I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Give me some feedback and let me know how you feel about me and my microphone. So listen, we're going to get right into it. How I feel about emoji use in relationships. Before I give you my opinion Um, I'll give you a little clarity on the question should basically what the person was asking was should people use emojis um, with kissy faces while they're in a relationship should they use those types of emojis with other people when they're communicating that was basically what the gist was about and for that I have to say we have to consider a lot of different variables in answering that question. That's why there's probably going to be a lot of different thoughts and answers and responses to that question. You have different personalities that were developed before you entered into the relationship. You have different communication habits, different thought patterns, different experiences, different perspectives on life and on a lot of things, especially in love. So all those things take are things to take into consideration when you're getting to know this person that you're in a relationship with, or if you're getting just getting to know each other, or if you're learning new platforms and new ways to communicate. So honestly, I think it's more of a question of boundaries, to be perfectly honest. That's my opinion. I think it's more of a question of boundaries. How far do you go? How far do you not go? Uh, One of the people I was in conversation with made a point about the emoji kissy face uses that there's like four different kissy face emojis, like the emoji where they're blowing kisses. One of them has a heart. The one that has a heart is, you know, if that let's say I'm dating someone and he uses the emoji kissy face with a heart to another woman that's not a family member, then that's inappropriate. And my response was, well, they're all kissy faces. Like, it, should he be blowing kisses to another woman anyway, whether it's got a heart or not? And, you know, there were some people that were like, oh, it's not that serious. People blow kissy faces. It doesn't mean anything. People kiss when they greet each other. Um, and that's why that's one of the reasons why I kind of feel like, yeah, people do, you know, kind of go bump cheeks when they greet each other and meet each other. And that's fine. Even I do that. However, it's clear in that context when we're meeting each other and greeting each other that we are that's a greeting that we are greeting each other. That's all we're doing. And in that context, that is clear. It is not mistaken that if I greet you, you know, with a cheek to cheek smooch, and then I turn around and greet the next four people with the same way, you can't misconstrue that to think that I'm flirting with you or I'm hitting on you or whatever. However, when I send a text message that has that in it, You can't really gauge the concept. You're not really positive. Am I flirting with you or am I just greeting you? Am I just being friendly? The context can get lost in a text message, depending on how well people know each other. But contexts can get lost. Um, So I think it's really about boundaries. Personally, I don't use those emojis with other men. 
family or not family. I don't use it. I don't use those emojis with my male family members because, well, we don't kiss each other. So why am I blowing you kisses? I don't use those emojis with other men, period, because I don't want to send, um, I don't want that male to maybe mistake that for something else. They'd be like, oh, Oh, she blew me a kiss. She blew me a kiss. Maybe I can, you know, flirt with her a little bit. No, you can't flirt with me while I'm in a relationship. Don't do that. And you're very fully aware that I'm in a relationship. That's just disrespectful. But that's another podcast topic. Me personally, I really think it's a question of boundaries. And I'll say this. My pastor has this thing that he says when he counsels couples or even when he talks about marriage and long-term relationships that you actually want to last And he said that sometimes couples think, well, couples usually think that the enemy, meaning someone who's coming in trying to tear up their relationship or their marriage, that let's say that, you know, it's a marriage and you've built your house, that the enemy comes into their house through the front door and somehow you've left the door open and somehow, you know, you weren't monitoring the door. See, the doors are open. The sliding glass door was open. The back door was open. The front door was open. See, somebody got in the house because you left the door open. Well, truly, all somebody needs to be able to slide into your house is a crack in the window. They don't need a fully open door. It could just be something as simple as the cracked window. The window got cracked. So my thing is, okay, well, let's check it then. What might cause a window to crack? Like what might cause the crack in the window of your relationship? If we're thinking of our relationship and our marriages as a house, then what might cause a crack in that relationship? What caused a crack in the communication between that relationship? Like what might do it? Might it be that we were upset with each other and we weren't paying attention and we were throwing stones and the window cracked? Might it be... um Something from the outside threw a stone at the window, you know, caused something, caused the window to crack. And because we were so busy not paying attention to our foundation, to our house, meaning to our relationship, we didn't even notice that the window was cracked. Um, You know, we use caution in real life when it comes, you know, don't throw that or don't swing that so hard. You might break the window. You might crack the window. We need to use that same kind of caution in our relationships and in our marriages and not just, not just romantic relationships, but in our friendships too. Like what are we doing in our friendships that might cause a crack in the foundation that may make it easy to shake the foundation of our relationships with our friends with our family members like we really need to pay attention to that what might cause the crack and i'm gonna be very honest with you a emote an emoji a misuse of an emoji in a text message conversation that was taken the wrong way could be it could be something that simple that caused the slightest crack or at least the potential for a crack and i'll just go ahead and share a personal experience with you this was Years and years ago, a friend of mine, a male friend of mine was getting married. Now, he and I kind of liked each other in that way, but nothing, the opportunity for a relationship just never presented itself. And neither one of us wanted to, uh, you know, jeopardize the friendship because the friendship had gone on for so many years and we didn't want to jeopardize the friendship. Well, Apparently, in our conversations, I must have left some lines blurred or I must have left something. Something was misconstrued in in the year in our years of conversation, in our years of friendship that in the early years of his marriage, once he got married, there was some rockiness. Between the marriage and I was sad to hear that because, you know, he's my friend and I want him to be happy. But in that rockiness, in that marriage, guess what happened? He called me and wanted me to come over at like midnight and one o'clock in the morning and come console me and come lay down with me. I just want a warm body next to me. Hold on, bruh. Bruh. Dude. First of all, no. Um, Second of all, what made you think 
that that was something that I would actually consider doing. Like somewhere in our friendship and in our communication, there was a gross miscommunication and misperception that I, I did somewhere in communication. I left it open enough that he thought, well, let me just push the envelope and test the waters really quickly. You know, let's see how far I can get with her. You ain't getting far at all. You're not getting anywhere at all. As a result, our friendship suffered greatly because I don't want to be friends with somebody like that. I don't want to be connected to somebody who would just, you know, happily and openly look for ways to disrespect their marriage. I'm not cool with that. But it made me realize I, in my communications with him, and at the time we weren't doing a lot of texting, that were, there wasn't a whole lot of texting back then. But had there been, and I used emoji kissy faces, yeah, that's that's an open enough door for somebody to say, hmm, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe she does like me like that. No, 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 no. So that for me, that taught me, be careful with how I communicate with people when I am in a relationship and even when they are in a relationship, because I don't need those lines to be blurred. I don't want there to be any misconstruing of communication and misperceptions of our friendship to think that there's a possibility of a relationship between you and I when there's not a possibility of a relationship. If there is not a possibility, I don't even want you to think that there is. So I'm going to communicate effectively and clearly enough by not using hearts and kissy faces and all this other stuff because I just don't want to leave, to dangle that carrot and leave the possibility that you might think that there's more to it or there might become more to it someday. The answer to that is, uh uh-uh, bruh. No, can't have that. Also, likewise, if I am in a relationship and I start having conversation with other men that's a little too loose, those men might take that as, well, she doesn't really respect her relationship, so why should I? I don't know that they'll do that, but there's that possibility. And I don't want to leave that door open for that possibility to possibly become a reality. I I just don't want there to be somebody that may create a crack that, that may come and try to crack the window of the of my relationship how the house of my relationship the house of my potential marriage because of something I said or did or didn't say or do I I don't I, I don't want to contribute to the breakdown of my relationship with something as simple as being a little too friendly that's why for me, it's more of a question of boundaries. For some people, it's just it's just an emoji. Well, I've witnessed, remember, I tell people all the time, yes, I'm naturally cinnamon. Yes, I'm cinnamon. But remember, I'm a therapist. I've counseled couples and I've counseled people post breakups that something as simple as an emoji has has just caused a ripple effect of confusion and miscommunications. So it really is a question of boundaries. Are you, How far are you willing to go or how far are you willing to let things potentially get? Because you just want to be free to say what you want to say and to who you want to say it to. I, I personally, me, I don't really need, I don't need that kind of stress in my life. I don't need that. I'd rather be clear up and down with it. You know that there's no chance of you and me because I'm not blowing you kisses. I'm not sending hearts. I'm not doing all this other stuff. Now I'm from the South. We call people by pet names, love, boo, hun, sweetie, sugar pie, dumpling. We do that. We do that. However, if it's something that I do to literally everybody, if it's, if I'm in the grocery store and somebody's bagging my groceries and I don't even know this person's name and I say, thanks, babe, I'm not flirting with you. But if I'm texting someone that I'm not completely and totally in communication with all the time and they don't know me well and I don't know them well, I'm not going to call them babe because I don't want I don't know how you're going to take it. I don't know what your perceptions are. I don't know what your communication habits are. I don't know what your experiences are. So I'm not going to say babe if I don't know how you're going to take it. I'm just going to leave that off the table and say just say thanks. 
just going to leave it off the table. It's it's a question of boundaries, in my opinion. Um, as far as the cracks in the relationship house go, you know, like like my pastor was saying that they don't need it. The, for someone who wants to come in and tear down your house, they don't need to go through the front door. They don't need to go through the back door. They can just slide in through a crack in the window. Periodically check the openings, I'll say. I remember growing up in that house, my dad... <sighs> My brother and I could not sneak out of the house. You know how sometimes as teenagers, you want to just wait until your parents go to sleep and you sneak out of the house to go meet with somebody. Yeah, that was never an option in the house growing up. (laughs) That was never the option for my brother and I, because we knew somewhere at random times throughout the night, at least once or twice, my dad is going to walk the house. He does that. He would make sure the whole, the house was locked up. He was make sure he would make sure that it was still locked up. He would lock all, lock everything down before he went to bed. And then somewhere in the night, he would get up again and walk through the house again just to make sure everything was still locked up. Like he would get up, check it, if he heard the TV on, you know, make sure the TV's not on, you know, turn it off. If we fall asleep on the couch because we were watching TV, okay, wake us up, go to bed. But it, he, he was checking the windows. He was checking the doors. He was checking the house because he wanted to make sure that in his absence or in his slumber that something hadn't shifted and gone wrong. If he could help it, he would walk the house every night. I think that he still does that. In his age now, in his retirement, I think he still does that. But he didn't trust that the house should be okay just because, you know, it should be all right. Mm -mm. I'm going to make sure it's all right. I'm going to lay eyes on it. I'm going to be there and check it. I'm going to make sure that the house is okay and not just lay in my bed and say, it should be okay. No, he was going to make sure that it was. We have to do that from time to time with our relationships. We have to check ourselves and then check in with your partner and be like, are we okay? We good? Are you good? Am I good? Are we good? Are there any cracks? It may have been accidental cracks, but it may have been something on purpose. It may have been something one of us caused. It may have been something somebody outside of us tried to cause or did cause. Okay, well, then how do we fix it? How do we go about trying to mend this? Periodically check the openings in the in the house. Periodically check the doors. Check the windows. Check the check whatever can come in and whatever can go out. Check it. And if in checking it, you say something like, you know, you your conversation with so and so is really loose, it's really fluid, and I don't think I, I I'm not sure, you know, are you sure that they understand your communication that that's just kind of how you are and that there's not more to it than that? I know women like this and I'm sure some of you all can they can name a friend or two. <laughs> don't name them out loud, just say it in your head. That if a man walks past them and says, hey, beautiful, in that woman's mind, he has just flirted with her and he wants her. I I know people like that. I know I'm not alone. I know y'all know women like that. And there's men like that, too. But I'm, I'm right now in this term, I'm thinking of of a particular woman that it does not it didn't matter what the man said to her if he paid her any attention She was just enamored and 12 years could go by and she'd be like, remember that guy at that um, place that was talking about, remember those shoes I was wearing and he was talking about those shoes. Girl, I wonder what he's up to. Honey, he just liked your shoes. That's it. That's it. That's literally as far as he cared about what was going on. He didn't ask your name. He didn't ask your number. He didn't ask if you were here with anybody. He didn't ask any of those things. You know why he didn't ask? Because he didn't want to know. But he did like your shoes. Like, leave it at that. But for some people, that is all it takes is a little bit of attention that they perceive in the wrong way. And Lord have mercy, you can't get rid of them. So check your boundaries when it comes down to something as simple as emoji use in relationships. Like um, 
Which emojis are you using? I'm going to be honest. For me, unless you are somebody I consider not just a friend, but a sister, I may shoot you the kissy face with a heart because I love you. I love you. But I have guy friends, three specifically, and one of them is my god brother, that I love them. I don't send them heart emojis. And kissy face emojis. And I don't, I don't do that because I don't ever want them to be in a relationship with a woman and she feel uncomfortable with the fact that I'm sending heart emojis. And I know a lot of people are kind of like, oh, if they're in a relationship with a woman that's uncomfortable because you send a heart emoji and y'all just friends and she don't have nothing to worry about. She's insecure. But you know what? Whether she's insecure or not, it is not my role to try to weed out any woman that my male friends date and be like, if she don't like the fact that I send you a heart emoji, y'all don't think you need to be with her. I mean, she's just insecure and she needs to check that I'm not that I'm not the ruler over her. I don't know that she may perceive it that way. She might, she might not, but I don't want to make a potential problem for him in any relationship that he has. So I'll just refrain. It's just that simple. Just don't send that emoji. It's really not that big of a deal. I'll just send a smiley face. I'll send a LOL, the crying laughing face. I'll, but I don't have to send a kissy face. I don't have to do that. They know I love them. But they also know that I'm not going to do anything to potentially harm any relationship that they may have now or in the future. I'm not going to do that either because I love you and because I love love and I want you to have love. I'm not going to do anything that may potentially jeopardize it. If she has a moment of insecurity, that's a conversation between y'all. That doesn't have anything to do with me. So I'm going to stay out of that, but I am going to be mindful of the fact that I don't want to do anything to trip someone else up. That, that's my thing. I don't ever want to do anything that may cause somebody else to trip up. Even if it's by accident, like I just don't want to be the, I don't want to be that catalyst. I don't want to be that person that causes a chain reaction of miscommunication because I had to send that little emoji. Um, it's really not that deep for me. I just won't send it. I just won't send it. It's not, it's not, it, I just won't send it. Now, there are people who send me emojis. But they know, they they may have a different level of comfort with me than I may have with someone else. Like I said, I have female friends. I'll send hearts to them all the time because they know I don't want them in any other type of way, but a sisterhood and a friendship. And I love you. But with men, I have to be mindful of my relationship. And I also want to be mindful of, of their relationships. I don't, I don't want to do anything to cause anything. I just don't want to do that. So that's my two cents. I would love to hear your feedback and what you have to say and what your thoughts are on emoji use while you're in a relationship. But also, I'd like to hear what you think about boundaries in relationships, setting boundaries. Do you have any experiences with boundaries gone wrong or anything like that? Love to hear back from you. You can email me at cinnamon at jamilawellness.org. If you'd like to send a question or a topic, you can send it there as well. Send them in at jamilawellness.org. Now, be sure to like this podcast, okay? Love it, share it, rate it, comment, depending on what platform you're on. But most important, you know it, subscribe or follow. I am Naturally Cinnamon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thanks for tuning in to Resilience Rising with Naturally Cinnamon. Life has a way of tossing unexpected trials and circumstances our way. We can't stop them, but we can better handle them by raising our resilience. Creative Director Jeremy Key for J.K. Collective. Music by A.J. Miles.